Hey there, Wargamers, Just Aaron Paint here, and today we're going to work on a Mad Cat. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. If you are a, a returning viewer, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you for having my six. I appreciate you having my back. Thank you for being an awesome lance mate, star mate, whatever the case may be. I appreciate you being here to help support what I do. Today is going to be the first video in a series where we are going to be working on a Gamma Galaxy uh, Clan Wolf Mad Cat here. Um, in that particular case, the scheme that uh, is typical that you see, or at least the one that's iconic that people like, is the tiger pattern. And we're going to try our hand at trying to do something like that pretty fast with some speed paints and give you guys um, a breakdown of how I go from start to finish on a piece. Now, we won't be going through everything. I'm not going to like do crazy edge highlights and stuff, but I think we'll get a pretty nice product when we are finished. That said, I want to go over a few things we're going to be using today, because for today's video, we're going to be prepping the mini, laying down some base coats um, or primers, and then we're going to be doing a little bit of masking, and then we'll end for that session. Uh, first of all, for the cleaning process, we're going to be using a few tools. I've got some Green Stuff World sanding foam pads here, and these are, in my opinion, the kind of secret sauce to helping clean the mold lines on the miniatures from CGL, uh, their plastics are a, a nice uh, step up from iron wind metals. However, the mold lines don't scrape off quite as easily as something as like a warm or 40K hard plastic. We will be using an X-Acto blade as usual. Uh, however, these sanding sticks really do come in handy. So we're gonna be using those today. We got our handy dandy X-Acto blade. We'll be using some masking putty from Green Stuff World as well. I've only used this once, so we're gonna be trying it today. Um, first, second time, and so this will be a little bit of a a uh, new experience for me because I haven't done much with this, um, but if you won't, don't have any, you could also use Silly Putty. I've got some of that too, but I wanted to use this because I bought it to try it out. If it turns into a dumpster fire in this video, we'll do a quick cut and I'll switch to Silly Putty at that point if need be, but hopefully that won't happen. We'll also be using some primer from Pro Acrylic and a couple other colors from them as well. Namely, we'll be using the dark neutral gray and some warm gray. Uh, so we get a little bit of highlights on the black and if you're starting to piece some things, some things together You probably uh, gather we're probably gonna clean this model. We're going to prime this model. We're gonna do some black um, uh, Transition colors on this model and then we're gonna mask it so you can get those tiger stripes And if that is where you were at, that's exactly what we are gonna be doing that said today uh, <laughs> With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get zoomed in here and uh, we'll start working on cleaning up our Timberwolf here. Now, uh, one of the things that we have to be careful with when we are using our X-Acto Blade is the scraping doesn't always work super well, as I mentioned before. So we're going to come in and we're gonna scrape off the mold lines as best we can. Now, one of the things I will say is as an artist, um, I do my best to clean these, uh, but as also a war gamer, if I miss some and the piece is finished, I don't stress too much. Um, I've won some awards for painting at Nova, um, and I've still had mold lines on them, and it all depends on what you're looking for, who's looking, and how hard they're looking, and unfortunately, slash fortunately, if you want to find fault with your piece, or if someone wants to find fault with your piece, they will find it. Um, you can take any one of the pieces I've ever done, even ones I worked really, really hard on to get into CSO, and you can probably find a little mistake that I missed. If that happens, don't stress. Just finish, or you know, take the finished model and move on and try and do better next time. Um, especially if these are for you to be playing games with and you're not as worried about a competition piece, don't stress too much over that. And that's kind of where I'm at. Like I said, I've got some stuff that's won awards that had mold lines on it that were missed um, that even the judges didn't see. And if they looked really hard with a microscope or zoomed in with a photo, they would find it. But unless you're taking this you know, two inch tall ish mini and blowing up to the size of your screen, in person, there's probably things that you're not gonna notice. Uh, additionally, when I'm working on minis, if, uh, if I've got really nice highlights and stuff, when I zoom in, or take a photo and zoom in and make it the size of my computer screen, those highlights don't look quite as good. Uh, and that is because we're working on something this small, when you blow it up this big, your highlights and stuff don't look as crisp because it's huge, you're magnifying it. Uh, so don't stress too much, do the best you can and clean up your mini. And if you miss something, it's not the end of the world. And if somebody says otherwise, well, it's not their mini. They didn't have to worry about it. Mini painting miniatures should be a stress release, not a stress creator. So in this case, as I have been rambling, as I am prone to do, um, we went ahead and scraped the basic mold line off here, and then we came in with our, this is the 280 grit um, sanding stick, and we kind of came in and I tried to smooth this out a little bit, kind of doing a circular motion here. I'm trying to be cognizant of the edges because I don't want to smooth the edges too much, but I really just want to make this smooth so it's not so jarring 
where the uh, mold line was removed. Because this stuff tends to, and once you start using an X-Acto blade, you'll likely know what I'm talking about or experience it. It tends to curl when you scrape, and it makes it kind of a pain in the butt to get all of that off. So these sanding sticks really do help. Um, one of the things that is worth mentioning is that I have had differing experiences with their plastics. So some of the plastics I got from the first Kickstarter, um, the mold line removal was uh, one way, and then the stuff from the second Kickstarter or recent um, force packs or action packs, whatever they're calling them, I think they're force packs, um, those have had um, a different experience with removing mold lines. So some of the plastics have a little bit of variance in their hardness, so your mileage may vary depending on what mini you're cleaning up, but these sanding sticks really do help. And right now this one's kind of scraping a little bit because this is the the uh, higher, or excuse me, the lower grit, so it's got more texture. We'll go to the higher grit, which will help you get a little bit more of a polish. And right now, I'm actually going to come in, and you can cut these. And I'm having a hard time getting in there under his arm, so we'll just cut that down. And we'll come in and clean up his little leg, because he had a little bit of a, a mold line going down the side of his leg there. There we go. And we'll do that over the rest of the model and uh, try and just clean up as best we can the mold lines. You'll get some hard to reach spaces. He's got a mold line that's right kind of on the, the side of his gun here, which is in a precarious and not easy to reach place. So we're gonna try and clean that off. But one of the things with some of these mold lines is they're in places that are not only hard to reach, but also not as easily visible. So do the best you can and don't stress too, too much. Again, like I said at the beginning, this is supposed to be fun, not supposed to be stressing you out. And if at some point you feel like it's stressing you out, maybe you gotta take a step back, take a breather, and remind yourself what you're you're doing this for. This is not supposed to be a stress creator, it's supposed to be a stress reliever. And I am aware that like sometimes there's stress with painting, I get it, but if that stress is a good stress because you're learning and it's a little stressful to learn, okay, but if it's stressful and that you're not having fun, well then there's a problem. We should be having a good time painting. That is kind of the point. So that's a little bit better, that mold line's still being a little persnickety. Let's grab our higher grit here and see if I can't get to that. And one of the things you'll also have happen with these minis sometimes is the arms and stuff will be a little bent inward. It's still being persnickety. Um, so anyway, the, <laughs> the, uh, the arms will be bent inward a little bit. So you can use a little bit of hot water or um, um, a hair dryer or something like that. Heat up the arm a little bit and kind of bend that back into place. Usually if I do that, I'll bend it back in place and then dunk it in like cold water really quickly. These aren't too, too bad, so I'm not stressing it too much, um, but that is something to be aware of, cognizant. That's more common on um, uh, a thing to deal with on things like a Marauder with like a bent gun up top and stuff like that. But worth noting, while we're in the cleanup phase, some of the stuff you can you might run into. Now, this guy right here has a few areas that I'm um, probably going to skip because they're gonna be a pain in the butt to get into and unlikely to be seen, and I'm not as worried about them. And that is namely, he's got some areas like kind of on the underside of his um, armpit. And those are really persnickety to get into. And I'm not trying to um, uh, cut this model up to get to those. 
it's one of those if people want to find a fault they will but you have to choose your time investment for the mini and what it is you want to do and while I will clean a mini there's a limit to the areas I want to get into and this is still looking pretty nice let's get a little bit of this uh, higher grit here and get that nose cleaned up just a smidge and this is me trying to show you guys things you can do for cleaning. Um, I've got plenty of mechs where I didn't do this because it may or may not matter to you for a project. So um, he's got some mold lines right here on the underside. I'll try and give that a scrape. These are the ones I was talking about that I'm not going to put a lot of effort into. Um, if you can get in there with your blade and um, remove those without causing too much problem, good. Um, but they're so difficult to get into and... Um, not easily visible that for me I find it's not that big of a deal if it is for you you can cut these strips up smaller and get in there and really really sand them but for me I think we're going to do a cursory scrape here with the blade do the best we can and move on and I say that and then I grabbed a little bit of the sanding stick to get down in there because, uh, like I said, the the um, the material tends to curl, and there were areas that um, were not coming up with the knife, and we're leaving a curl, so I wanted to clean that. This one's mold lines are on the kind of top side here, so a little easier to get into, a little easier. There's a nice little flake right there, just came right on up. It's one area um, with the CGL minis that I'm just, it's, I'm not a fan. The cleaning process is a little tedious uh, relative to other games that I've come from. So we've got this little underside under his little rocket pod that's pretty egregious. So we'll try and get that cleaned up. Let's grab our larger standing stick. It'll be a little easier for me to manipulate at this point. of a line there all right let's see if our exacto blade will help us out smidge right in here you can see where that stuff's kind of curling up so you can also come in with a really sharp knife like a scalpel or something and like hand shave these. Um, I do not have a scalpel. Usually exacto is good enough for most of my hobby projects, just not the CGL ones. <sighs> and we're going to try and flatten out that French slip edge. All right. I think that might be about as good as that one is going to get. It's still, still per snout. Nope, no, it's still there. Being a little, there we go, persnickety. It's like my, my word for the, uh, the video today. Persnickety. All right, let's grab that higher grit and just smooth that a smidge. All right. I'm going to grab this higher grit stuff that we have here and just hit the kind of edges of his rocket pod. Sometimes there's a little mold line, especially on the edges you get. I'm trying to go with the angle of them so as to maintain the angle that they've got going on. Yeah, and there's usually, if you get one, it's usually gonna be like right there. Uh, one of my CSO entries had one there and uh, that was one of the things I had to clean up for my submissions. All right, so I am pretty pleased with where the cleanup is on this. It's not perfect. There's just some areas in here that weren't super easy to get into. But I think for some of that, it's A, the back of the mall, so not a lot of people are going to see it. B, do your cleaning to the extent that you are happy. Um, sometimes, oops, looks like I might have missed a few. Uh, sometimes you might want to check the edges of the feet. It's a real easy one that I miss sometimes. It's not the end of the world once you've done basing, because um, usually that stuff kind of obscured anyway. Uh, but that is a real easy one to miss, so be aware. It's usually like a little ring on the feet, and I was about to miss them. Well, I say feet. On the toes. On the toes of your mechs. 
So a little, uh, often a little line. A lot of times it's easy to miss because A, you might not think about it, and B, it kind of looks like um, it's like where two armor plates are kind of coming together. So it's not not always the, the end of the world. And like I said, clean until you're in a state that you're happy with your mini and move on. Don't, uh, don't stress too much about it, um, especially if it's a gameplay mini. And if it's a competition piece, um, you can clean as much as you want, but if somebody wants to find a fault with it, they're going to find a fault with it, and that's just that's just the way it's going to be. So don't stress too much. Don't get bogged down in what you're doing. Just be happy with where what, uh, what you're trying to achieve. Now that said, next step, we're going to come in here, and we are going to lay down some primer. For that, we're going to be using our Pro Acrylic Black. It's good stuff. Um, I also really like the um, uh, Steinal Res from Badger. That is good stuff as well. Let's get our airbrush checked and ready to roll. Alright, so we're going to come in and we're going to prime this bad boy. And there we go. I've got our primer down. Give that a moment to, oh, we still spot under this rock. It's real easy to do. <laughs> While the primer's drying, we're gonna do a quick, uh, quick rinse of the airbrush, which is something if you are airbrushing, you should always do clean. Don't let paint dry in your airbrush. And to speed things up, a pro hobby tip that I highly recommend for all of you is to have a hair dryer in your uh, your repertoire for your hobby space. It's going to speed up your your drawing of your minis and get you back to painting quickly. So in this case, we've got our handy dandy hair dryer. And we're gonna hit this guy with the hair dryer until he's dry. <clears throat> And there we go. One of the things I will say when you're using the hairdryer, be careful. If you turn it up to the high setting, they will get a little uh, uh, malleable because they're warm and uh, they'll be bendable, which is kind of what I was talking about earlier with being able to bend arms back into place. If you use a hairdryer, that's one of the things that's going to occur. So next up, let's zoom out just a smidge. We're gonna grab our dark neutral gray, clean our, clear out our airbrush first, add a little bit of water in there. We're gonna grab our dark neutral gray. And we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of a highlight on the mini. Doesn't have to be crazy. Don't need crazy, super duper coverage because we're going to be putting the masking on anyway. So let's go ahead and put this in here. You'll, when I do this stuff, I usually put a little bit of water or uh, thinner or something into my cup. Then I put paint. So that way the first thing into the bottom of the nozzle here is not paint. It is water so that it's not clogged. And then I mix the tilts and I mix on the side. Boop, boop, boop. And then we'll check consistency on the back of my hand. Reasonably happy with that. So we're going to come in at an angle here.
I'm reasonably pleased with where that first highlight is. I'm going to clear out our paint, just a quick dump, and give that a quick spritz with our hair dryer, just to dry that a little quickly. Alright, with that guy dry, now we're going to come in with our next color. We're going to use a little bit of the uh, warm gray um, over the top here and see how we feel. Still got a little bit of the dark neutral gray in the cup here, and that'll be fine, because if this is toned down just a smidge, not the end of the world. So I'll give a little mix on the side here. That tones it down just a smidge, because it is a little bright. Not the end of the world. Come in here and we're trying to hit some high points here. Don't have to have full coverage, just want a little variance in that black and gray. I want to tilt them here and get a little bit of the side of that rocket pod. Once our gray is now down, uh, we've got the transition from black to gray, which is what we want. Um, we're going to be prepping to do the masking portion of this part of the project. Uh, before we get to that though, I'm going to spray a little bit of mecha varnish over the top to help seal the mini so that when we do the masking, we're less likely to get any peel up, which is not what we want to occur. So we're going to put a coat over the whole mini here just to help seal in the paint that we've got down. I find this paint, or this, uh, Varnish goes on pretty thin, so it's pretty nice through an airbrush. I believe you can thin it through the airbrush as well, but this stuff goes pretty nice through as it is. Now, it is not the most matte of finishes. It's almost like a, almost somewhere between a semi-gloss or maybe a satin and a matte, maybe. I don't know how to describe it. Um, for the final coat uh, or final matting, I always use a different matte, but this is really good. Um, for what we're doing here. It's also really good if this is the only mat you're using because it's designed for Gundams, the people who do Gunpla, and that uh, the Gunpla stuff has a lot of um, handling done with it. People are reposing their minis, moving them around for um, their display cabinets or display cases or whatever. Uh, so this helps protect your um, game minis as well. If it's good enough for basically grown man's uh, Gundam toys, it's good enough for your mechs. And then you'd guessed it, the next step, we're gonna come in with a hair dryer and dry this bad boy off. With a little bro dry here, we're gonna come in with our masking putty here and start trying to make our tiger stripes for our little mech. So we'll grab some of this here. Try to be a little easier without the glove on. So we got a little bit of our masking putty here. And boop, zoom on out. And what I'm gonna do is kinda roll this out and get some long pieces. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting this on the mini. It's actually, I don't want that directly on that uh, the table here picking up our, our paint. So just roll, actually we use the back of that, right? Boop, boop. I'm just roll out a little bit of this. And essentially we're going to be making our tiger stripes with, with this mask. So let's come in, cut off a little bit here. Probably not gonna take a huge amount. Actually, I want that to be even a little thinner. And there we go. All right, boop. We'll come in on our little Timby and find some spots. Oop, let's go a little bit even smaller than that. We'll find our spots we wanna start putting our stripes on. So let's do, let's do some up here on the canopy. Let's get one that kind of goes across the top. There we go. And I've got these sculpting tools on my desk to help us push these down and kind of get this more in line with where we might want it and get a little bit more of a natural like kind of point there. Because mashing down with your finger only does so much. So I'm going to kind of move this around 
and get our masking putty kind of where we want it to be. Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one right there. Boop, boop, boop. Try and cover that up. All right, so we got first stripe down, about a billion more to go. So we'll keep putting these on, and then once that's done, we'll be ready to uh, finish up this guy for the step. Guys, so uh, I have got the masking done here, and unfortunately, my camera was not recording when um, I was finishing that up and applying the airbrush here, but I have gone ahead and uh, reapplied uh, a highlight after masking, and uh, I will tell you my experience with this masking solution was not very great. Probably works really good on 28 to 32 mil scale stuff, but the smaller scale stuff, it just adhered more to my gloves, my fingers, and my tools before it would stick to the model. I think it's surface area thing or whatnot. I thought it might have been the oil in my fingers, stuck to the glove too, just would not adhere to him. So if you want more stripes, you can use, um, you know, go in my hand with black, or you can use Silly Putty, which is probably gonna be a little bit better. But with that said, we've come back in, we reestablished our highlight here with the white. Um, one of the things I was talking about when I realized the camera wasn't recording uh, was when you do this, make sure it's really thin passes. You don't want to have really crazy pooling of the paint on top of this because if you get the pooling next to the masking, you get weird flaky paint and you don't want that. So that said, guys, that's going to conclude step one for our mini today. Uh, we have gone through the cleanup process, um, applying um, your, your primer and a kind of um, pre-shade or base coat in this case, because we were doing the, the black and the gray for the stripes that we will see later. And then we've prepped it for our future colors of paint, which will be in video number two. So uh, that said, if you enjoyed this, please hit that like and subscribe. As always, keep painting your models, keep rolling your dice, and I will catch you guys next time. If you made it this far, you're probably a viewer that already hits that like button when you see a video come up. You're probably already a subscriber, and you probably jump into the comments down below to help support the channel, to help support that algorithm. But if you're looking for some other ways to help support the channel too, make sure you check the description down below. Maybe you want to pick up some paints from Monument Hobbies. That's my paint of choice. The Pro Acrylic line is Chef's Kiss, good stuff. Maybe you want to check out some of the offerings from Death Designs, where I work in my day job. We got plenty of 3D printed uh, products as well as MDF terrain, some of the stuff that I have designed myself and we play with here on the channel. And if you're looking to bolster your Battletech uh, ranks, miniatures, and offerings, make sure you check out uh, Bobby from Fortress Miniatures and Games. He's one of the main supporters of the channel as well, and supporting any of these companies helps support what I do and helps to ensure that I can continue to bring content to all of you. If you want to become a super supporter, I highly recommend you guys check out the Patreon. You guys get the extra little edge to help push more content out, and I really do appreciate that. And my ultimate goal on the channel is to continue to be able to not, not only put out the content we have now, but to get to a point where you can put out more content later, whether that be battle reports or painting tutorials, or just more rambles, anything at all. I'd like to be doing more content for you. This is something that I enjoy. I like being able to cast a light into the darkness to bring a little bit of hobby positivity to all of you and make you feel good and also enjoy playing games myself. As we do the final sign off here though, I do want to go ahead and switch on over and do the, the scroll of awesome to showcase all the Patreon supporters, the super supporters of the channel to give them some recognition for helping support what I do. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.